If you're planning on buying any cards from TCG Player, make sure you use our affiliate link right here in the description of our video to help support the channel. It's the best way to do it and it's free. Make sure you check out Poton Store. They have the new certain shield codes already available and they have automatic email delivery for these codes. You can get them in batches of 50 codes with a slight discount or individually for 89 cents each. They also have all these other promo codes. They have um, every other set you could imagine. And if you use Tailbone code, you get 5% off your final purchase. For the European players, Millibuds Gaming has everything from collectibles to all the latest cards from the latest sets, Cosmic Eclipse, Hidden Fates, and everything from Sun and Moon. Don't forget to check it out and use Tailbone code when checking out in order to get 5% off your final purchase. Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new day of Road to TG Worlds 2020. Thank you so much for being here and for hanging out. First I wanted to start off with a big shout out to Pink Vapor Gaming and Remyo for the host last night. I've been doing reruns of the videos just to make sure that there's always content happening on my Twitch channel and um, they were very kind to host me <clears throat> even though it was a rerun. So. Thank you so much to both of them. Max, Protissimo, buenas, buenos dias, good morning. Thank you so much for being here. Early stream today. Today is a, an interesting day. I don't have my, my morning station, my morning um, coaching sessions. And Team Polyswag, thank you so much, Alex. How are you doing? Early stream indeed. 29 months of support. That is insane. Thank you so, so much, Alex. That is so kind of you to resubscribe to the stream. I really appreciate it. How have you been? Um, so yeah, today is a, uh, a peculiar day for me as I'm going to be streaming early, then I'm going to be finishing off because I need to go to the bank and then I have a meeting um, with which will hopefully lead to cool things for the channel and then um, I should be starting off the stream again for a little bit in the afternoon. My goal is to do five or six decks total today. So let's get right onto it. Josh, hey, how are you doing? Good morning. So we are going to be taking a look at the third place off the good list, which had a lot of people buzzing and talking about it and wondering like how to do so well. I would like to point out that um, this list is two parts different than the one I posted on YouTube on day one of Sword and Shield or day two. Yeah. So this is the third place list. This is the third place list from Oceana Charizard X Best. So <clears throat> of course we have Obstagoon, which has the untamed shout ability, where when you play this card from hand to evolve one of your Pokemon, you may put three damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon. So pretty nice to be able to um, place damage counters there. Post Provolone, thank you so much for the follow and um, and we have Obstruct so that we deal 90 damage and during your opponent's next turn you prevent all damage done to your opponents. Done to this Pokemon, it attacks from basic Pokemon. So in attack team heavy V meta, Obstagoon seems like a great counter card, right? There are ways to play around it. You can gust things off from the bench, you can use Fion to send it back. Um, you can just play Evolution to snipe it, so there are ways around it, but in an under-prepared metagame for it, or in a metagame where it's not expected to be too, too popular, and people don't actively tech for it, that's where it's definitely going to shine the most, right? So, pretty cool card to have. It goes really well with the Galarian Six again with a Headphone Tantrum, which when you play down your bench, you get to place one damage counter. Then you have a wide array of support Pokemon and Jirachi, Mew, Mimikyu, and we have stable IP so that with Crazy Claws we can take advantage of the damage counters that we are placing and we deal 10 plus 60 more damage for each damage counter on your opponent's active Pokemon. We also have Evil Doll GX where with Doom Count GX if they have exactly 4 damage counters no matter what it is, you can immediately knock it out um, next turn. And we have Verizon GX where with a Breeze Away GX attack you can take away um, or you put any number of Pokemon in play and all cards attach them back into your hand. So you can take away threats, or not threats, sorry, you can take away targets that your opponent could do to bypass Obstagoon, be it by Fion, or be it by Sniping, or Ghost Effects, 
you can take away everything from play and then if you're 100% sure that your opponent will not be able to get an obstacle, then you only leave one obstacle in play. If there's a chance that your opponent can knock out the obstacle, you can um, leave two obstacles in play, hopefully. And then after one goes down, obstacle is your lone Pokemon in play, and therefore um, you get you get full protection. Obstacle can't be set, sent to the bench to get the effect um, restarted. So Reason GX is one of the cards that I didn't have in my original list, and Beta is the other one where you get to attach a basic energy card from your hand to one of your bench Pokemon. So you get to accelerate energy. You do need two dark energies in hand to be able to pull that off, so I don't think it's gonna be easy. And eventually with like Quick Bolt and Professor's Research, you'll probably end up losing the Beta anyways. I would love to ask the, the player that used the deck, like how many times was he able to effectively use Beta um, to like power up an Obstagoon on turn one. Uh, but yeah, let's jump in the ladder, see what we can do, and some counter against Wolf at B, Pratissimo. Um, I mean, the counter to Wolf at B is that Wolf at B is a terrible card and you should not be facing against it in any sort of form, in any sort of competitive play. <clears throat> and if you are facing off against it, then just use Evil Tall GX or Stable Light B to knock it out. The deck itself looks fine, the only card that confuses you is the Reason Jax, but well, hopefully the explanation um, helped. Hola Lucario! Um, you wonder how the judges in OECIC dealt with remembering that Dark is not weak to grass? I mean, you just look at the card, right? Like, that's... it's as simple as it gets. But once again, my opponent's choosing to go first, which I feel like we have the discussion every single time. Um, I don't want to get into a big... Um, heated argument over whether it's correct to go first or second. I am of the position that you should almost always, because I don't like using the word always in Pokemon, most of the time you should um, you should choose to go second, but to each their own, you know? Um, Alright, so not the best hand, that's for sure. I'm gonna get rid of the obstacle and I wanna search for Jirachi. I'm gonna start stealth pushing, right? Because I definitely need to do that. So go ahead and start stealth wishing. Alright, so I mean I shouldn't be getting KO'd anytime soon next turn. So I will use I will grab the Pokemon. I will get myself a six again. So I can get an energy down, I get the damage counter going. Not too shabby. And I should be able to get another turn of Stellar Wish where hopefully I'll find a research. That's the plan. Hello, Kula Diamond. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you so, so much for being here. <clears throat> all right, so we see a stadium. That's not a problem at all. Don't really care about that. Right. Right. Like, sure, my opponent got to use Station's ability, got an energy down as well, right? But if your goal is to get turn 1 ADP, like sure, going first gives you a chance to attach an energy to an ADP. We need to be able to have the energy and you need to be able to find the ADP. <coughs> and I think people are just taking for granted that they're just gonna magically have those cards every single time in their starting hand, when they're not even playing um, for, for a beach, you know? For a beach. All right. Okay, muchas gracias por el mensaje, Max. Lo, lo tomo en cuenta. <laughs> lo tomo en cuenta. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Eh, sí pasa mucho que estoy 
en mil cosas. <risa> Estoy en mil cosas. Y tienes razón que debería estar dando el 99% de mi atención al stream. Las muletillas, eso sí, creo que es un poco complicado que me las quite de un momento a otro, pero definitivamente la atención es algo que, que debería mejorar. ¿no? Pero es que siento que no me alcanza el tiempo para nada. Y por eso hago mil cosas a la vez. Alright, nice top deck. Right, nice top deck. Terrible stylish, ¿no? I mean, not terrible, but not great either. Um, I'm just gonna have to pass here. So I'll lose my Jirachi, but that activates Rosa, and then I get to use Obstagoon, which is great. Right, I get to Rosa for Obstagoon and Energy, and... <clears throat> Maybe I should have attached to the Sableye, actually. But I had a chance to just knock out the station instead. I put my opponent in an awkward situation. Yeah, maybe that would, that would have been better. Alright, or it seems like my opponent will choose to GX with ADP, which I think would be slightly better, right? Especially since, you know, one of my two cards, one of my two cards in hand is actually Rosa. Charizard best, the explanation. You realize before it seems like one of those theoretical... Yeah, I agree that it, it on paper, like, <laughs> it's not gonna happen often enough to get to make it happen every time, but It is a nice a nice option to have, you know, it's like it's better to have the option than to not have the option Okay um, I don't think I'll be able to have time to test expand it this week cool a diamond So I really wanted oh well, that's bad. I really wanted to get um I really wanted to get the old Shiana decks covered and because I've been I was prepping I was helping people prepare for Shiana. And I took a vacation last week, a week long vacation. Honestly, my expanded knowledge, I don't think it's up to par quite a bit, quite like quite right now. So I don't feel like the the expanded coverage that I could give is gonna be is gonna be super accurate or super like worth it, you know? <clears throat> I don't know if I'm like explaining myself. But that's my do I? I don't need the escape board. I want the Jirachi to go down next turn. I don't think it will, but I want it to go down. Um I'll put the damage counter there. I'll attach. I should be still wishing before even benching. Very candy. I kinda like the, the rock more. Just to put those cards back. I already have a candy. What am I thinking? Alright, to both. <clears throat> Evanik, thanks so much for the follow. <coughs> Thank you so much for the follow, and then we'll pass. So I wouldn't mind the Jirachi going down, we will have to also the next turn if that's what happens. Uh, what A specs do I own in real life? Charizard, I have a computer search, I have a dozen machine, and I have a life two and a G booster. <laughs> Those are the four I have. Uh, if I ever, like, I'm fairly sure I could just go ahead and buy um, the, the scoop of Cyclone and the scramble switch if I ever needed them, but it's hard to justify playing any A-spec other than Dowsing Machine or Computer Search for me. <laughs> no Pokemon Catcher, but he did double custom catcher, so that was sad. And he flipped heads on my energy, so that's also sad. Snorlax, Vmax, and Ultron across my Dragon One are the big boys with some Dark Box. Dark Box hasn't changed, okay. G booster, yeah, it's because I used to play. I won a regional like five years ago, maybe more, five six years ago, with Genesec DX. Genesec DX was it called G booster? I don't even remember. <laughs> I actually don't even remember. You can have my Sableye. I really don't mind you KOing the Sableye. Well, I do, right? I definitely don't want it to happen, but not much I can do about it. Did my opponent play switch? Yeah, he did. Alright. Scramble switch is seeing more play, is it though? Like, was there a scramble switch played in top 8? 
maybe in the right Jurok deck. Hello Turbo Darkness, thanks so much for being here. Keldeo GX, interesting. I like the inclusion of Keldeo GX back into the deck, because if Mewtwo is only playing Charizard GX, then he could get away with... Um, if they use their GX attack on ADP, then you could get away with Keldeo GX at some point. And having a water type is nice against the Reshizard, the Reshi or the Firebox decks for sure. G Booster, yeah, G Booster. <laughs> I have two in fact. I don't know why I have two. I probably used one and then I pulled one off of prize packs or something. Would have been great to see you pull off Supreme Puff on stream, or possibly in real life. Why do you mean Supreme Puff? Cool, a diamond. What's Supreme Puff? What is Supreme Puff? Okay, I'm just gonna set up my obstacle here. I have the switch, so I'm rolling for energy, oxygen, and counter game. Well, actually, never mind. Well, yeah, I do want to set up another one of these. I'll grab the counter game, I'll grab the energy. I do need to start applying some sort of pressure. And then I'll do this. And then I'll still wish for. How about this? Well, uh, I wish there was like a thank you. <laughs> Alright, I'm not gonna play the evolution instead because I didn't put back the. Well, I do have a living. The three damage counters, I will put them on the active, that way I am 2 hit KOing it. It's really sad that I don't have a single. But I haven't played a single supporter. The damage counter should go to the Jirachi this time around. I'll keep continue to thin. And I'll strike. My opponent can Fion, which is good. Uh, he can double custom catcher, but I don't mind losing anything of this because I'll have the Obstagoon. And we'll see. We'll see what happens. Can't be damaged, that's great. He can be GX attacked. By oh, this this guy doesn't care. I mean we don't get one killed by Keldeo, but this guy doesn't care that I have Obstruct. Hmm. Um, Turbo Darkness, Computer Search, always Computer Search. Yeah, always Computer Search. Oh, Trio Babies GX Attack. You know what, Kula Diamond? I, I found a Japanese deck that looks really interesting, and I'm gonna play... I'm gonna use that Trio Babies GX Attack for the, like, for the heck of it soon. Yeah, not this week, because I won't have time to stream tomorrow, I don't think. But probably next week. I will probably play it at some point next week. I have the deck, I, I know how to build it, and I'm gonna try and make it work. <laughs> I'm gonna try and make it work. Snorlax like VMAX is basically string a lot of, a ton of play with all the special energies and greedy bench sitters. That's the station being expanded, the deck is filthy. Yeah, I mean, I understand why it would be good, especially if um, it's played like with Shaman EXs and the Denes and like Turbo Ray, right? Like Mega Ray EX from back then. Is this Team's OCIC list? Yes, yes it is. And how do I feel about Stealthy Suit and Gun? I feel like it's just like icing on the cake. I don't think you need it to win. It can be good. Could take the place of Verizon GX. They kind of serve the same purpose in a way, but I don't think it's necessary. And I don't think it's a surprise that the third place list didn't have it. All right. So we're gonna obstruct. I mean, I haven't played anything, so <laughs> we're just hoping. And this is what I don't particularly like about the deck. You're always hoping. Okay. Okay, okay. 
The big amulet, I mean the big charm means I'm for heat KOing this person. Unless I find an obstacle at some point, like another obstacle, right? 190, 280, oh no, I need a six second and a, uh, an obstacle. It's okay. <clears throat> <laughs> Max. Eh, pues ya jugué con Stone Turner en, en Standard y no me disgustó, pero tampoco me pareció algo muy, muy impactante. Ok, so why did my opponent not ultimate ray? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Why did my opponent not ultimate ray to power up Keldil? Because he just had the energy in his hand. Which is fair. I'm definitely in trouble though. Like if I don't top deck a way to attach an energy to this obstacle, I am 100% losing. 100% losing. And even if I do, I think I'm still gonna lose. <clears throat> in a certain pink... <laughs> yeah. Booming, you mean Electro GX? Electro GX, I mean? That's what I'm. That's what I'm gonna uh, try and build. It's that with Mew and Electro GX and expanded. All right. <coughs> <coughs> This, yeah, this is a little bit more aggressive, that's true. Well, I mean, the dolls versions were just playing two dolls, though. All right, so we're gonna lose the linen, the linen, to the double custom catcher play. I don't think I win now, because there's Fionn. Like, oh no, Fionn is in the discard pile. Fionn is in the discard pile. I wonder how many energies my opponent plays. I can't promote the Jirachi because otherwise I could just end up not attacking. Uh, I mean, sure. <laughs> I'll, I'll grab something, but I'm fairly sure I've lost here because I attack him and then Keldo comes up, attacks me. And then I attack Keldo and then Keldo attacks me and he wins. So the Keldy GX ends up being a really good inclusion because Sonic Edge will give him the edge. <laughs> and even plays Malolana for fancy purposes. That's good because if he had retreated, then maybe I'd just go Great Catcher on that and stall him out. Although he would have had the Malolana, so not super impressed by the deck. I feel like this deck's success is more down to people's unpreparedness for it rather than the actual strength of the deck but that's just me yeah he hits first with Keldeo so there was no way there was no way uh Charizard no it can't power up GX Pokemon but it can power up the Mew that has the ability that copies basic Pokemon's attacks so you blow up Electro GX and attach counter energies onto the Mew which counts as double, right? So that's that's kind of the plan, I guess. <laughs> Why do people not take Keldeo and OCIC for ADP Sation? What do you mean, Coletta? Like for ADP or in ADP Sation? Uh, Keldeo doesn't stop Sation, so that would be part of why. Yeah, like all the V cards now means Keldeo GX is way, way, way less powerful. What are my thoughts on Malamar? I I did like the the psychic tack version. I felt like it it seemed really strong. Um, the non GX like I, it felt like Giratina is as strong as ever, and Copycat Mimikyu is really powerful as well to just return KO the station immediately. So I do like that version. I've been feeling very comfortable with Mewbox, and I've been really liking Trevnor and the disruption that Trevnor offers. So well, that's, um, uh, can I afford to discard this hand? 
I believe I can. I'm not happy about it, but I believe I can because of the ordinary run. It was a harsh discard though, that's for sure. It was a harsh discard. Alright, I'm just gonna go ahead and grab the quick ball. My opponent says I have a good deck. Thank you so much, opponent. So the damage counters will be redirected to Jirachis. If you're gonna spam, then I'm gonna mute you. Indian just 34. So please don't do that. I don't need to worry about basic Pokemon. My flea, thank you so much for the follow. This 10 damage will go to... This is a 50 HP PG, so maybe I should have pressured that PG instead. It's fine. It's fine. We have a dead hand once again, unless my opponent takes a knockout. Well, actually we don't because of Marty, never mind. Alright. Gloom's conversion from day one to day two was horrible. One did very well, but was that just luck by just dodging bad matchups? I mean, combination of bad matchups and also, for example, Azul's deck or the, that Malamar Psychic deck, like it just uh, accepted that loss, right? I feel like a lot of people went into Oceana accepting that they would lose to Obstacle if they did play it. And that's a fair, that's a fair thing to do. You can't beat everything, right? And Silver Pocket, yeah, I mean, Professor's Research, Marnie, and Quick Balls, like, those are very, very big boosts to... Very, very big boosts to... To Malamar, right? Malamar's consistency, so it makes sense that you would be happy about that. Or you would feel more comfortable with the deck, because the deck definitely got a lot, a lot better. Alright, I'm gonna grab the escape board. That way I don't have to use the switch. And then I'm gonna go ahead and Marty to take away my opponent's hand. Back down to four, and I find the energy, which is exactly what I wanted. So now I feel like I just win here. Why did I not place the three damage counters on the Blasephalon in order to make it a one KO with Obstruct rather than two KO? Because I actually don't care. I actually don't care about to hit going Blastephalon because Blastephalon is literally doing zero damage to me. It seems to cut in consistency. What do you mean? What cut in consistency? Ayunente, the revenge. Que se usa para el mirror de ADP con Sassian. Okay, no lo he visto. Definitivamente no lo he visto. Alright, so Blastephalon is my opponent's best answer to the obstacle. That's why keeping the switch was super important. Now I can play, because that way I don't have to um, play around the confusion, which is really good. And if I manage to set up a second Galarian obstacle, then I can just manually retreat as well into the other one. And I feel like if I just knock this guy out, I've 100% won the game. So the Pokecom is a very, very welcome top deck. However, number one, I should have waited to use it because my two linemans, I discarded them earlier and I forgot. And number two, because if I still wish into a rare candy, which I didn't, but if I did still wish into a rare candy, <coughs> I might have been able to... I might have been able to... to just, like, Pokecom into the this instead of the line but I had to line it. So I, I did that horribly. <laughs> I generally did that horribly. Um, let's just go for the Marty. Having the obstacle now in the bottom of the deck means less chances of me drawing into it. So that's also a factor. So I'm gonna choose to shuffle. These two, I don't think I need anything else. Those two are good. And then we'll go ahead and deal some damage here. How do I feel about the new boss orders, Daniel Davis? Okay, so this this happens a lot. Sword and Shield just became legal for tournaments this past weekend. Boss orders is a great card, obviously. It's a gust effect, it's great to have that back. But that card is not legal until the end of May. Sword and Shield just became legal right now, so 
I personally, because I have a tournament to win this weekend, and I have a Toronto Regional to win in two weeks time as well. I'm going to be focusing on that because I really don't, like, those, those tournaments or those cards are not relevant to me until I can use them to win a tournament. As of today, that is not something that matters, you know? So, is it good or bad for the game? I don't know. I think it's good, but I don't really pay attention to, to newer cards purely because <clears throat> purely because they're just not relevant right now, you know? Uh, all right, so I'm definitely... Well, am I retreating? Am I retreating? Okay, so if I retreat and attack... Oh no, yeah, I'm definitely retreating. I was like, well, I retreat and attack with this one, and then I get confused, and then I need to find a switch still. But no, because I'm getting a KO here. There we go. Easy peasy. The Ultra Necrozma build. Oh, so Mew 3 Malamar you mean? Silver Pocket? Eh, I don't know. I like it. I do like it. Hello Guerrero, thanks so much for being here. I don't know if that makes sense, Daniel Davis. Like, boss orders, that's the cost effect, right? The uh, Giovanni card, the Slicehander back. It's a great card. Obviously it's a great card. But I generally, I don't pay attention to future cards because Sword and Shield just came out this weekend and I have a tournament to win next weekend, so... Thinking about those cards will not help me win the tournament that's happening this week. So I don't really pay attention to them as much. You know, I know content-wise, I'm probably missing out by not covering them, but I'm not like super worried. I just personally choose to focus on this weekend and not what's gonna happen in four months time. <clears throat> Uh, Stati, thanks so much for the follow. Mitch, which I am doing well. Thank you, how are you doing? And I will... <coughs> I will... Um, finish the obstacle video right here. It's a pretty powerful deck if your opponent doesn't have a counter to it. If they do, then it's uh, not so great, I feel. Um, it's still got third place. It is something I have to consider when building your deck, but I don't think it's necessarily a the be end the be all or whatever the the maximum meta counter deck because there are ways around it you know jayman thanks so much for the follow don't go anywhere people i will be right back with the fourth place mancino meal deck from oceana in just a second